My name is Kevin Clemens, and I live in Baltimore in the Waverly community. Well, actually, I, I think I've sort of always been out, but never out as far as me expressing what I felt. And it really wasn't until probably my last year of high school when I actually was outed out by my music teacher. He told me that, that I was gay, and I said, no, I wasn't because I had a girlfriend. And he goes, yes, you are. And I said, no, I'm not. He says, yes, you are. I says, Kevin, I love you. He said, a year from now, you'll be back, and you'll tell me that you're gay. So a year went by, I came back, and I said, guess what? He goes, you're gay. So I am gay. And um, that kind of started, I guess, the person that I've become as far as my work in the community. Because what I've just learned over the years is that I think we're oftentimes driven by some type of passion. And if you don't put yourself in situations to apply the passion, you'll really never know what it is that you can do or what you're capable of doing. And I think that's how it started. I mean, when I first got started in the community, I was a little unsure about community because I kind of grew up sort of in the county, real shy, not being very involved. But, um, but there were some things that I saw that I didn't like. I didn't like how people were being treated, second rated know, being treated disgraceful because of who you love. You know what I'm saying? There has to be something done about that. But I didn't know who or where to go to find that. So what oftentimes did myself, I implanted myself in a lot of situations and just act like I've been there all the time. And as a result of that, I connected with people. In this very building here, the GLCCB, when Chase Brexton was up on the top floor, I was one of the first African-American HIV counselors and testers that they had early 80s, like mid, sort of 88, 89. And um, little did I know that that was allowing me also an opportunity to get into the community because I was interviewing and counseling people. I guess I became a friend to them. They started just kind of sharing with them about who they are, what they were, what they were feeling, the things they were going through. And as a result of that, that also gave me more inroads into helping people and it fueled the passion even more because I'm finding that a lot of people were testing positive but they still don't have anything specific for them. And I'm saying, well, some of these people don't have anything specific for them. And I look at our African-American community, and what I've always found is that our issues are pretty much the same, but the unfortunate thing sometimes is the excess isn't there for the issues or the concerns that you have. So that peaked in me, why not do something about it? So I started doing like little mini education sessions. And as people were coming to the clinic being tested, I'm saying, all these black men are being tested positive. They have no place to go. What can we do? So I started a support group called Positive Power. And all I did was I went to a person who ran a support group and said, what do I need to do? He says, well, if you're fueled by your passion, you want to help people, just start a group talking with people, get some information, hand the information out, and it started from there. But then the thing is, sometimes about our African-American community is that we don't always identify with being gay. So my question is, how do you go about getting these group of people that don't identify as gay, that know that they need your help into some kind of a, a safe space? So I created a flyer, and all it said was, if you're black, if you're male, if you're HIV positive, here's a number, call the number. That was all I did. But what I did was I went to every bookstore, <laughs> every mall, every bathroom, every park, every corner where they hung out, and I just put flyers everywhere. And then one person responded, then another person responded, and another person responded. So in December of 1988, Positive Power was born. And over the course of all that time, which was to the mid-90s, by the time the support group kind of ended or dissipated, there was over 300 people in it. And I got recognized nationally as one of the first groups of that magnitude um, to create a support group like that. I think one of the other things, too, is that I think there's always been this um, concept or this perception that, that as black and white gays, we don't necessarily get along. Um, my take on it is this. What I believe is that when an issue comes that impacts on you, it's not about your color, it's about the issue. But because you are the color that you are, <laughs> that's what people look at first. They don't look at the struggle. They don't call the, the process going up to where it is that you go to. And I think sometimes, once again, I look at access. My experience has been, in, in, in the white gay community, there's just been more access and a little bit more freedom because some folks just feel more free, more comfortable with who they are. I suppose in the black community, 
the whole issue of being gay is, is so impacted by outside factors, inside factors, like outside your church, your family, your community, you know, your inside factors, like, I don't know why I'm attracted to a guy, but I still have a girlfriend and I love her too, so there's so many issues that never get addressed, and I think that lends itself to the confusion sometimes, but, but also too, within both communities, there's been interactions, there's been partnerships in the nine yards, and I think sometimes with our community, what tends to happen is we see those kind of partnerships, that's partnering with a, with a white partner, we sometimes think, oh, they must be thinking white. No, you're still a black person. This is just who you choose to love. So I, I think we still share this commonality, but at the same token, too, there are some things to me that are uniquely white, <laughs> and there are some things that are uniquely black or uniquely African American. And I think what just tends to happen is there's nothing wrong with embracing who you are as a community, as a culture, but I think sometimes we can lend each other the favor of now and kind of letting each other know what that is and find out and find and sharing that information that you actually do share the same kind of situations. You've been through the same kind of struggles. I mean, it may have been based on your know, white existence or my African American existence, but those experiences sometimes are still the same thing. And once you get past that, what I've seen now is that now we're creating such a force now that has no other choice but to be recognized. Because Oftentimes people turn to the race card, which is the most easiest thing to do because that's just such a blatant thing that you can see black, you can see white, but you don't see the overall picture. But now I think what's happening now in the community since you know, all this is happening is that we're now having to become more unified. But also we're finding that the same unified, I guess, concerns that we have are universal concerns anyway. So gay marriage, I mean, the thing is, I, was, I had a union ceremony. Um, I was with a partner for five years for the moon ceremony, and, and, and when I think about it, I really didn't, I'm, I'm like this, I love it, it didn't matter how we went about expressing well, it was more important to my partner that this is how we expressed it. Mm, five, no, 93. Um, my partner was, just, that was for him, that was a very important thing for him to sort of acknowledge it and be very symbolic about it. And I said, okay, honey, I love you, just go for it. And um, so as a result, we had, Photographer, everybody designed the cake. We had a minister officiated. We had decorations, food. We had matching outfits. And the thing that impressed me the most is that we had a room full of 81 people that showed up. It was black, white, old, young, gay, straight, just the whole nine yards. And to me, above everything else, that made me feel really special outside of the person I was going to give my life to at that time because. They didn't see color. They didn't see gay. They didn't see, they just saw two people that they loved expressing their love and loved them enough to invite them into the process. And if we look at it that way, wouldn't it make things so much more easier than it is as opposed to trying to just make everything so specific and so controversial or so difficult? This whole marriage thing is like, you just want to love who you love and give that person the same options that you have. Because I used to hate sometimes going to work and knowing some gay people were talking to third person about their weekends. So I've always kind of been out once I grew up. So at health department, being working in that field and all, they knew all about me. But it was so sad to see somebody talk about me and my buddy this weekend did this and we did that. And I knew that their buddy was not their buddy. The buddy was more than their buddy because I knew the buddy. So now I think what's happening now is we're at a level now where we're getting more comfortable with who we are. And now that we got some kind of legal kind of premise behind it, it's making it a lot easier. But at the same token, too, there's always some people that hold on to the old way of thinking, so they're going to make it a little bit harder for you to fight harder. But guess what? We're used to fighting and struggling anyway, so what's one more struggle to add to the list of laundry list, buffet table of things that we do anyway?